Hello, I'm John Niles, and thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm going to present today on the owner's story because it isn't often presented enough. In my presentation, I plan to share some perspectives from the owner's viewpoint. The goal is to open the aperture up for you to define what is a deliverable, and it's just not BIM. It's much more than that. I plan to cover some current states as far as process, some of the time that's being lost and as, a, as a result of some of these outdated processes, and um, introduce reality capture as a solution that could bring some of that time back, as well as some other techniques um, that we use. Also, I want to uh, present the future state where we close the gaps on some of this lost and missing information. So let's go ahead and dig in. Again, I'm John Niles. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. Uh, I've been in and around the AAC industry. I've been lucky enough to work at a few companies, uh, those listed on the right-hand side. Each of them have had, I've had unique roles around the world and uh, I've had a chance to work in different build environments. My current role is uh, a technical consultant for owners. I help them with their digital building lifecycle approach. And I work in different build environments, uh, such as data centers, corporate real estate, aerospace, mission critical, and defense. Just a little bit about GAFCON. GAFCON's a consultant to the owner, and that's all we work for is the owner. We're software agnostic, meaning that we don't we don't work with particular softwares on, on their behalf, but rather we work from the client side that may already have some of this technology or the software deployed, and they and then we help them develop that technology stack out to integrate it into a more uh, robust building lifecycle approach. Thinking about that end in mind, working for predictive outcomes, looking for gaps, uh, building a seamless integration and effective change management. GAFCON provides strategic consulting again to the owner. Um, we work with owners on emerging trends and technologies. We do a lot of systems integration, so we look at different systems and how they can work together and how they can be vertically stacked for that digital transformation to occur. Um, we also provide staff augmentation. So we work in uh, we work in 23 different countries. We have uh, we have over 200 projects under our belt, and uh, we're able to help uh, our owners on a lot of different technical needs. Just a little bit about our people. We are very much BIM centric experts from a variety of backgrounds, um, such as architects, business analysts, construction technology uh, professionals as well as software developers and analysts. So first I want to present the problem, but I'm going to present it from an owner's perspective. The owner must manage and access models, drawings, blueprints, permits, you name it. Many of these documents are revised throughout time, which means that the companies also have to track multiple versions. There might be different documents floating out there and they've got to make sense of all that. The two, uh, the two pie charts on the left hand side here, while come up with different numbers, they all estimate time spent searching for data or recreating data. If you look at the, the worst end of the spectrum, it's nearly a thousand hours per year lost. On the lower end of the spectrum, it's about 300 hours that's lost. This is an incredible waste of time. Think about that. That's nearly three, three weeks of time at the very least that's being wasted looking for recreating data. So on the other end, we, uh, we conducted a, a research uh, uh, poll on facility managers with facilities managers in mind um, just to find out what their accessibility to floor plans uh, were. Um, it was very interesting. 12% didn't even have floor plans. So that means somehow that building was built, the floor plans never even got to the, to the owner or the facility manager to use. 12%, it's quite a large number. Um, a lot of respondents said that they had in-house CAD technicians to help with that, 30%. And then another 27% either hired 
uh, in-house consultants or did a combination of in-house and consultants. So again, pretty large number. And then finally, 31% had to hire in consultants to help them develop floor plans. We're just talking about blue. Um, we're just talking about blueprints, 2D drawings, floor plans, not models. And we, you know, as a, as BIM practitioners, believe there's much more than just a floor plan. Obviously, there's so much more data than just a floor plan. We had one respondent that replied, "The best strategy that can be done is." by pen and paper only. Is that really what our strategy should be? Pen and paper only? So let's think about that. If workers waste 15 to 30% of their time searching for data or recreating it, there's gotta be a better way. And we as BIM practitioners know that there's a better way. It's called BIM. Even with BIM though, We've gone from a, a process that was primarily paper-based, you know, as you can see on the right hand, on the left-hand side, uh, the gentleman is drowning in paper. That was the way it was before digital deliverables, and then came along digital deliverables. The reality is, is that del digital deliverables are not really that much better. Think about it. Everything's siloed. It's either put on the cloud or on a disk in a in an electronic file. Um, it could be in a PDF drawing or it could be a, a CAD drawing. All of those require special access to get into and access to. Um, that gentleman or that that professional leaves the business. Um, those passwords are lost. That data actually is much more vulnerable to being lost or siloed or or not used at all us than having to recreate it. So our owners, our facility managers, our operators, they're still drowning and we can help them. So the other thing that we should look at before we start looking at solutions is the, the process. During construction administration, design teams will develop design documents, typically maintain and update those changes and revisions as they occur through the, the design life cycle and into construction, and then issue those for construction as design documents. The GC will make changes to those, inform the design team of, of revisions, uh, request for information, and those, those design documents will continue to develop out. Eventually, the GC will develop what we call uh, documents uh, as known as as built And those are the items that are shown in red. Depending on the region, the closeout document models are updated to create a, a record model for handover to the owner, either by the design team or in other cases in other regions by um, the, uh, the GC. It just depends on uh, which region you're in. In reality, this really still leaves a lot of information missing. Typically, red lines uh, constitute changes to the 2D drawing sets that are updated into that record model. The models don't get updated typically. So there's opportunities there to close those gaps that exist with the, with the models. In reality, this is leaving a lot of information still missing. We have a a solution that we propose is better and, and helps that whole entire process along. So what we look at is using a common data environment, a CDE. The solution is really developing a single source of truth to collect all the relevant models, drawings, blueprints, permits, and all the other information into one central location that can be accessed by the right people at the right time, but also serves as a single source of truth. It also has revision tracking so that it can be um, updated as needed, but also is able to, to be used to go back and look at historical documentation, what may have changed over time. As BIM practitioners, we need to ask ourselves, you know, um, do our owners, are, 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 
are the deliverables that we need to provide back to the owner or the client um, going to go into a CDE? Ask those questions. Have that, con that conversation about what is required at the end of the project. Start out with that beginning. Start out with the end in mind. By developing a common data environment, we naturally start to begin to build what we call a digital thread. And that digital thread transcends all the different silos that exist from planning, from design, to procurement, to construction, and then into operations. And ideally, if that, if that data is well-defined, is rich in information, and is well uh, planned out in the very beginning, it will flow from one silo to the next silo to the next silo, basically breaking down those silos and creating that digital thread of integration. Another way to look at it is to go back to our old process. By implementing three strategies, um, one is the establishment of an asset tagging system at the very beginning of, this, of the project, or the program with the client, understanding what, what equipment in the BIM model needs to be tracked from an asset standpoint, building that asset tag to that allows that tag to be used throughout all the other data collection uh, process points. Again, if we start to uh, layer in reality capture throughout the process, especially during construction, we can start to build a model that is well beyond a level LOD 400, LOD 350, because it's representing as-built conditions. The other part of that is that if it's being done during construction, that collected data can serve as a time capsule so that future owners and operators can go back in time and look what was installed, what was, what was under that floor before the concrete was poured, what was behind the walls before the drywall went up what was in the ceilings before the ceiling went in. All those things give key insights to operators and owners on how to maintain their facility and how to update it later. The other critical point of this is also BIM oversight throughout the entire process. And that's just not clash detection. That's really making sure that the models are well developed, that are being maintained and kept clean, tidy, uh, without a lot of, of extraneous data, they're geospatially uh, maintained and coordinated so that models line up when you bring them together. And to make sure that the asset tagging parameters that need to be included in those models are captured, and more importantly, that they're being populated throughout the process. And to include any sort of extensions like COBE, or any ISO 19650 requirements that may be required. By having that BIM oversight throughout the entire process, even over to the owner, you're ensuring that the BIM data and the model data and all the other extraneous data that goes into that, including reality capture data, is maintained and is a true picture of the physical building. So I want to talk just a little bit about the visual twin because reality capture does so much more to add richness to the models that we have. Obviously, it's moving well beyond an LOD 350, 400 as far as graphical detail goes. You can capture bolts, nuts, things you would never ever model in a BIM model because it was just too cost prohibitive. It also becomes the basis for our digital twin. If we add that in with the BIM models as well as the asset data, we can start to build a true digital twin. And really this becomes the basis for a, a digital industrial metaverse. We can use that for training. We can use it for site orientation. We can use it for safety can use it for facility condition assessments. We can start to look at that reality capture as it's happened over time to see things that may be uh, decaying or degrading or changing or need to be refreshed. And so then it becomes a foundation for future design activities. Couple that with BIM 
now the design teams are able to start uh, from a fresh start, but also more importantly, you can use that data, distribute that data using the common data environment to be able to allow other stakeholders to get access to it for uh, planning purposes, for estimating purposes, and much more beyond just, uh, just regular old BIM. The reality capture also opens up um, a whole host of other things. As you see in some of the pictures here, what we're looking at is taking the BIM models and then we're comparing them against the reality capture, the laser scan. And what we find is that there are adjustments that need to be made. So this allows, uh, it allows either the GC or the design team, depending on the region, who's responsible for creating this record model to be able to make adjustments to that, to that uh, BIM data. By being able to make those adjustments, we have a more accurate picture of what's expected at turnover. Everyone has expectations that that, that model will be much more complete and within tolerance and specifications that were outlined in the original design and building program. So these are just the few folks that uh, benefit from reality capture. Again, from an owner's perspective, we're able to keep track of job progress. There are now algorithms out there and systems out there um, that allow you to compare point clouds so we can track a job progress. That's amazing to be able to track job progress, check job progress against the BIM model, how much, how much data or how much uh, material has been installed. Are the, are the things that are being installed in place, are they in the wrong place? Do we need to have a trade go back out and move certain equipment or do we need to make adjustments? These are the types of insights that we're starting to get by using AI and reality capture. Minimizing unnecessary change orders. Geez, if we find something early on, then we can make that, that change on the fly. We can start to use this data in in owner meetings with the design team and with the construction teams so that they can coordinate and pre-plan next steps. And finally, the handover of a as-built or an existing conditions record model is much more satisfying. It is, it is turned over with a lot more trust and understanding that it is as complete as it possibly can, can be. For GC, for GCs, it's going to be faster and clearer RFI generation back to the design teams to make, make actions on. They'll be able to start to use reality capture for floor, floor flatness, floor levelness, overlays for job progress and payout, and validation of as builds. There's just a whole host of benefits that come from reality capture, and that's just some of them. So again, look at the long-term view. I ask everyone to take the long-term view of this. This is really a marathon to developing out digital twins. And that's why it's so difficult to create a digital twin is because it really has to start with a lot of really good data collection, data preparation, putting it into a CDE, a common data environment, being able to start to visualize some of that data, do analysis on it, and then start to be able to pull and insights from it for communication purposes, and then be able to start to take action on those things, especially from an owner's perspective. Again, if you need help, we are software agnostic. We optimize uh, your current system. You're in control of, of how you're gonna maintain that digital twin or we can maintain it for you. You own the data and we really like to uh, fancy ourselves as being the digital Sherpa uh, to help you out through that entire process. And so with that, I thank you and I open it up to any questions.